2018. Lisa Booth, senior fellow at Independent Women's Voice and a Fox News contributor. Marianne Marsh, a former senior advisor to John Kerry. And Tom Bevan, co-founder and publisher of Real Clear Politics. All right. So, Tom, let's start with you first. Comey has arrived. He is uh, he's on the hill right now and he's behind closed doors. He's going to answer more questions today. What changes from this moment? Uh, we'll see. Not much. I mean, I thought it was interesting that the back and forth between Trump and Comey over the weekend on, on the tweeting, um, you know, James Comey saying, look, if you really where are the Republicans going to stand up and defend the FBI and the rule of law? James Comey has done more by his actions to undermine uh, the reputation of the FBI. Just last week, he said, look, I sent these agents over to the White House took a shortcut because this administration was new and inexperienced and chaotic and I could get it done that way. We know what he did with the memos that he leaked to trigger the special counsel in the beginning, the way he handled the Hillary Clinton investigation. I mean, James Comey, this is why Republicans, I think, uh, want to see him again, want to grill him again, because he really has a lot to answer for. Mm. Well, you don't have to paraphrase because here is that back and forth to which you reference. Uh, here's the president on the Cohen raid. Remember, Michael Cohen only became a rat after the FBI did something which was absolutely unthinkable and unheard of until the witch hunt was Ill illegally started. They broke into an attorney's office. Why didn't they break into the DNC to get the server or crooked's office? The, and then the former FBI director, James Comey, tweets back to the president. This is from the president of our country lying about the lawful execution of a search warrant issued by a federal judge. Shame on Republicans who don't speak up at this moment for the FBI, the rule of law, and the truth, Lisa. Well, I think Tom's right in the sense of the more James Comey has been out there, the more President Trump looks right in firing James Comey. Hillary Clinton would have fired James Comey uh, if she had won the election. It looks like he has lied to Congress on a couple of different times. You have the leaking of the memos. You have the IG uh, report saying that Comey was insubordinate, showing just the numerous amount of times he's gone outside of the bounds of protocol. He told Congress, took unprecedented action, telling Congress that the Trump team was under investigation while simultaneously telling the president behind the scenes that he wasn't under investigation. He told President Trump that CNN was looking for a news hook regarding the dossier after the private meeting. The dossier was leaked and reporters were given a reason to publish it. So I don't understand how anyone at this point could look at James Comey with any sort of lens of credibility. And further, you wonder if there was bias at the FBI. He's been out telling Democrats or, or people to vote for Democrats in midterm elections and saying Republicans should be denouncing the president. So at this point, why does anyone even some care deep what James Comey I, has I, to I say? Will tell I, mean, you one, come on. I will tell you one person who, do, who does. Her name is Marianne Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Marianne. Best, best setup of the week. Yeah. Come on. Last yeah, week come I said on. it wasn't his biggest fan. Look, I think this has less to do with James Comey, and Trump's outburst over the weekend has everything to do with the Flynn sentencing tomorrow. Flynn poses the greatest threat to Donald Trump. There is a reason his filings are so heavily redacted. And I think we will find out tomorrow. We may find out more about why uh, Flynn will get the sentence he's going to get in lieu of that information. But believe me, Here's Trump, what I want to know Trump about knows tomorrow. that this yeah. is not going to end this well. This is going to happen during America's newsroom and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll Good timing report for you guys. Yeah. It as it comes along here. Mm -hmm. I want to know if Flynn gets a chance to speak tomorrow. He will. Well, we'll see. He will. I uh, talked well, to Dershowitz last hour. He wasn't necessarily well, convinced. We'll see how the here, court goes. But here's what we need to know from Flynn, is that why was the lie, wh why did the lie even take place in, in the first place? Because he has the authority to speak with the Russian ambassador that's at the true, time. Right. Why that's did not true. it happen? That's not true. Tom. Listen, I, I disagree with Marianne. I, the more we learn about the Flynn case, the fishier it looks in terms of the way that it was executed and set up. I mean, Rod Rosenstein admitted, he said, you know, no, no lawyer necessary. We found out about the 302, right, which was filed seven months after the fact. It wasn't even a 302, a summary of Flynn's uh, interview. It was a summary of Peter Strzok, interview of Peter Strzok about that interview. So there's still a lot that we're learning. Um, and I wouldn't be, look, I, I don't, I don't, and Mueller did not even ask for jail time for Flynn, which is unprecedented because in the situation. That, that couple things here. That should tell you he gave up all the goods on everybody. Number we don't one. Know. Number two. We don't know. I, I heavily no? redacted. Don't know what's behind the redaction. Why You're just you assuming redacted? something to be there. Number one. Well, number I, well, I don't know, but that's what we're two, waiting on. Those conversations that he had. Some of them happened before they were in office with Kislyak, the quid pro quo and the sanctions. That conversation, one of them, happened before they were in office. Uh, I'm going to get to Giuliani and make it quick, Lisa. Well, 
Yes, the Congress or sorry, the Obama administration cited the Logan Act as part of the concern and the need to talk to James Comey that or sorry, talk to Michael Flynn. That is a joke. The Logan Act has been around for 218 years. Nobody has been prosecuted under it. And I think the big thing that nobody is paying attention to, why was this conducted as a counterintelligence investigation? DOJ guidelines for a special counsel. You're supposed to have to be criminal investigations. You have to establish a crime in order to appoint a special counsel. Counterintelligence investigations allow for open-endedness okay. because right. you don't have to establish right. a crime from That's the beginning. It, it allows for a fishing expedition. Logan Act was like 1804. I think you're wrong on that. 18, 1804. <laughs> With sarcasm, he says, you know, Marianne has a way of waking me up on a Monday. <laughs> me, yeah. me too. Me right. too. <laughs> so here is Giuliani yeah. with Chris Wallace from Fox News Sunday. Awesome. He is a special counsel. Does I mean, he want to interview the president? Yeah, good luck. Good luck. After what they did to Flynn, the way they trapped him into perjury, and no sentence for him, 14 days for Papadopoulos, I did better on traffic violations than they did with Papadopoulos. So when you say good luck, you're they saying no joke. way, no interview. They're a joke over my dead body. Um, <laughs> the position of Professor Dershowitz is that as far as Giuliani and Trump are concerned, the Mueller matter's over. You got the written answers. There won't be any <clears throat> interview. That's that. Tom. Well... That's, that's the administration's position. We don't, to your point, we don't know whether this thing is just wrapping up. Some people think it's just heating up. There's going to be more going on. There are tentacles and offshoots going in all directions. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice if Mueller would wrap up the what his official mandate was, the answer of whether or not there was collusion. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that we know of in the public right now that that occurred. And we've got all sorts of other different investigations going on. And critics uh, or supporters of Trump will say, look, these are not germane. The idea that, like, he committed a, an FEC violation, uh, whether it was even that or not, before he took office about something that was happened years ago, um, that's not what we, what we were promised. That's not what Bob Mueller was supposed Marianne, to be doing. Uh, the problem for Trump is if he tells the truth in an interview with Mueller, he's in trouble. If he doesn't tell the truth, he's in trouble. This is not up to Donald Trump. This is not up to Rudy Giuliani. It's not up to Alan Dershowitz. It's not up to Mueller. It will be up to a court whether he does that interview or not. And believe me, they're planning to go all the way to the Supreme Court <clears throat> to fight that interview. Lisa? Well, you don't necessarily know that. And Giuliani has no. already said that they have provided 1.4 million documents, 32 witnesses. The president has answered the questions from the Mueller team. You cannot say at this point that the president has not been an active participant in the Mueller investigation. He absolutely has. His team has played ball. They've given them information. And I think for the president, there's a particular point of frustration in looking at the way Hillary Clinton was treated versus him. You have Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin, who knew that Hillary Clinton had started this illegal server, yet nothing happened to them. They lied about it to the FBI. There's destruction of evidence. Nothing happened so to you're them. Cheryl Trump's Mills the was allowed to represent Hillary Clinton as her attorney, which helped <clears throat> shield her. So the differences between the way the two investigations are conducted should be troubling for everyone. So why wouldn't President Trump be raising the alarms of that? Of course, it would be concerning looking objectively at the two. All three of you, thank you very much. Marianne, thanks for waking Bill up. <laughs>